sector has uh, four major standard uh, uh, you know policy options which is to, to increase efficiency through um, reducing losses uh, of transmission distribution auxiliary and so on so that itself will uh, reduce co2 emissions so secondly increase share of renewables uh, uh, and there uh, the, the renewable potential is not so high uh, third is captive power generation how to reduce that now uh, odisha is very unique in that sense that uh, uh, captive power size is higher than the grid power so uh, and that is a that requires i feel study by itself uh, but still we will touch upon several aspects of it uh, uh, here uh, in this project um, and uh, fourth is increasing reliability of power uh, availability so that um, efficiency is ensured both at the supply and at the demand side so these are the uh, four major options they are uh, options for all states but each uh, states have to use these options in a different sense according to their own uh, opportunity and so on so uh, challenge is this um, uh, uh, age uh, or remedy is how to uh, incentivize uh, we remember that earlier uh, how we were used to do renewable energy bidding and once we went into reverse bidding the power sector started falling so uh, uh, then i don't need slides huh? okay uh, then coming to agriculture, we know that it is um, responsible for both economic losses and electricity losses. Uh, so uh, we are looking at that uh, for uh, looking at solar pumps, uh, which could reduce the CO2 emissions. But more than that, it gives you three um, uh, possible models. One is the uh, what is happening currently in Orisha is that. Uh, they are single isolated pumps. Second is that uh, the um, pump, pump owner becomes a prosumer. He produces more electricity also for other people and improve its economics. And uh, then other uh, option is also community uh, solar uh, uh, facilities where uh, irrigation can be planned. The different uh, villages may offer different types of opportunities. So these are the uh, three sectors. Uh, I will not discuss transport sector today, but uh, uh, summarize that uh, we have three states, Gujarat, Odisha, and Assam. Gujarat is an industrial state, Odisha also, and uh, urbanized also, whereas Odisha is rural, but uh, industrial states, and Assam for the, uh, as a representative of Himalayan states, uh, as well as um, northeast state. Uh, so I'm glad to see the commitment of uh, high-level uh, officials uh, of uh, Odisha government, and uh, the, uh, we uh, are very encouraged by their participation. And uh, Ms. Mukushi Sen Gupta, who will uh, also now uh, give an uh, idea of why MacArthur is interested in. Um, uh, these uh, ask these aspects. So I uh, thank you again, and I hope that uh, this explains uh, the brief outline of the project. Thank you. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, you've already covered uh, the, the, the outline of the project. Uh, we are doing it. Uh, Irade is doing it jointly with uh, the MacArthur Foundation, uh, and. Uh, a lot of study has been done in Orissa. Orissa, I know, is a very progressive-minded state uh, because we had uh, we had uh, uh, come to you know it, it was uh, the the state in the eastern region in 2013, which had uh, wanted smart grid implemented, uh, and it was one of the first state for reforms uh, uh, in 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 the country. Uh, so it's very progressive-minded, and it's taken great leaps. Uh, you know, it's, it, it's, uh, it has done a lot on, on how to tackle uh, the cyclones that is to come and uh, the amount of uh, deaths which is to cause earlier. Now, this has, this is, uh, there's been a tremendous improvement, and uh, I'm glad that 
some of the people, some of the officers here, which I'll, in, who I'll, I'll introduce to her, also looking after the, the disaster management uh, uh, in Orissa. Uh, so without saying much more, I, I request uh, uh, Motishi uh, Sen Gupta to uh, give her address. Let me just uh, say a few words uh, about her. Uh, she's uh, Yeah, I think it's yeah, okay. One, one second, I, just a small. Uh, it takes too long. Uh, if she oversees the foundations. Uh, Twenty-five minutes. Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, so just a few words, ma'am. Uh, she oversees the foundations India office, uh, which uh, provides grant making to civil society organizations. Uh, before that, she was uh, uh, director programs and advocacy in o Oxfam, uh, and also she worked with the, the DFID. She's uh, uh, MBA from a gold medalist from Punjab University and MSc in Applied Environmental Economics from the Birrell College of UK. Uh, she's also visiting faculty with the Symbiosis Institute of International uh, Business. Uh, so please uh, go ahead, uh, Murtishi. Please uh, give your address. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Batra. Thank you, Dr. Parekh. Um, it really gives me a great pleasure to be part of this August gathering. Uh, most of you know of know us or of us, um, but for others, we are a 42-year-old U.S.-based private philanthropy institution, which supports um, individuals, institutions, and networks to create um, a more peaceful, just, and vibrant world. Um, our headquarters is in Chicago. The foundation, however, has maintained its physical presence in India since 1994. Uh, since 2015, the India office has been um, almost totally focused on the foundation's big bet on climate solutions, focusing on action that will keep the rise in global temperatures to less than two degrees Celsius um, over pre-industrial levels. Um, that's our overall goal um, that the entire program looks to um, target. The foundation's climate solutions um, program strategy prioritizes three countries, um, which is basically the United States, India, and China. For each country, the foundation has drawn up separate strategies so that we remain responsive to the specific needs of that country um, or that particular geography and not use the same set of responses um, across the three countries. Uh, the India strategy is uh, underpin underpinned by our commitment to our support to government of India in achieving its nationally determined contribution uh, commitments within the approved timelines. Um, following an extensive process of exploration um, in 2015, uh, the foundation had identified four major objectives um, for support, as I will just mention below. Uh, firstly, we wanted to support um, civil society organizations um, so that they can uh, work with policymakers in developing suitable policy frameworks which are in line with the country's commitments made in Paris. Um, so we were entering the field fairly, um, it was a green field um, in 2015, um, largely, and we wanted to support um, uh, the development of an ecosystem of civil society organizations who could support um, the policymakers um, with, their, with information and networking. The second objective that the foundation had identified for India was to um, support the development and use of market-based um, initiatives. Um, to achieve climate goals, because we um, realize that uh, while um, government and uh, public policymakers have a really, really critical role to play in this front, um, it, the, the burden or the responsibility of making sure that action happens, is, it has to be spread across a larger set of key stakeholders. So we wanted market-based initiatives to also uh, feature in our portfolio. Uh, the thirdly, we said that, you know, we wanted to support the expansion of renewable energy, especially of rooftop solar. Um, fourthly and lastly, we wanted to support clean tech in the small and medium enterprise sector. So far, uh, we are five years down the line from 2015, and the foundation has supported uh, 33 nonprofit institutions so far, um, aggregating uh, 43 million US dollars, and intends to continue um, support um, in the future years as well. Um, largely on the four areas that were mentioned um, earlier, 
but um, we ourselves are going through a strategy review at this point in time which might lead us to a slightly tweaked um, form of um, uh, engagement but that we will get to have a better clarity um, later this year uh, this particular project that the foundation supported um, actually responded to a third program objective um, and uh, basically looking at building um, a, a larger expanse of um, the larger expanse of um, you know how to go about um, creating better understanding of um, uh, you know policies and practices in the sector of um, in in the, in the agriculture power and transportation sector um, so the foundation is really pleased to support um, this type of um, study in india which by design will prioritize the use of market based approaches in achieving the ndcs um, as part of this study um, the, and as dr parik has mentioned irade has reached out to three state governments uh, to conduct in depth analysis of specific sectors where the states have authority for policy making we um, realized um, during our exploration phase um, that you know it was really important to bring in voices and engagement of state level actors in achieving the country's um, climate goals uh, because uh, a national policy um, was while it was very important the actual impact on the ground uh, would act, will be realized only when states uh, start taking a more active uh, role in this whole process um since the start of the project um i know irade has coordinated with policy makers academic institutions practitioners in these states uh, to propose policy options that are market oriented um there is a long way to go uh, but i understand that the initial responses from the state governments have been highly encouraging um i am delighted to see such a rich gathering of representatives who have come together to um, jointly identify solutions i'm confident that the con conversations that are planned over the next couple of days um, will provide deep insights on the policies that need to be developed to achieve the country's climate goals i would also like to call um, out at this point the state's capacity to convene key stakeholders which is absolutely essential as we move forward on this front um, to so that we can discuss and identify solutions that are best directed to address the change, challenge of climate change um this includes uh, government departments and agencies representatives from industry academic institutions and civil society organizations it is important that they participate um, in the planning and execution of um, of the policies to enable faster impact today seems to be one such occasion when a cross section of representatives have come together to discuss these key issues i look forward to listening to your views and presentations and i'm confident that this will form an important step um in identifying suitable solutions uh, for the state of odisha thank you very much uh thank you motoshi uh for your for the background of the work that you do uh and now i request mr nikunj bihari dhal who is the principal secretary to the government of odisha uh, looking after the energy department uh he he is uh, he has got many notable professional achievements to his uh, credit he, he transformed the state commercial tax department by digitizing the entire spectrum of interface between the department and business uh, he from he he's he formulated the futuristic building standards uh, regulation for bhubaneswar city he he's also worked as uh, joint secretary uh, in in the ministry of uh, in the government of india ministry of health and family welfare and uh, he was instrumental in launching the national urban health mission uh, uh he is a uh he is a uh ias officer from the odisha cadre he is an uh, engineer from nit roorkela and with post graduate degree in iit delhi and a masters degree in public uh, administration from uh, syracuse university new york usa uh please uh, go ahead welcome mr dhal and please go ahead with your address
Mr. Dhal, we can't uh, hear you. Uh, I, 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 there's some problem because uh, you are speaking. We can see you're speaking, but it's not coming. Can you can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Now it's fine. Yes, thank you. Okay, so uh, so, so thank you, Mr. Batra, for the introduction. So good morning to all of you. Uh, uh, respected Sri UN Behra, our chairman of OERC, my senior colleague Dr. Saurabh Gar, Dr. Jyoti Parik, Dr. Kirit Parik, uh, Sri Batra, and Mrs. Sen Gupta, and all dear participants. In fact, at the outset, I would like to thank you for organizing this event, both Irade as well as the MacArthur Foundation, for inviting me to speak on the inauguration session. In fact, uh, the topic that we are discussing the, the, in the context the energy and environment in the context of the power and the agriculture sector is very, very important. And as Madam Jyoti Parikh told, in Odisha, actually the power sector is unique. Here, the captive generation accounts for 65% of the consumption, whereas the grid power is about 35%. And one very, you see, the problems in the electricity sector are very deep, and all of us are aware of it. All this problem is arising due to the fact that at the political level, at the policy level, and at the society level, we do not really feel that electricity is an economic good. So we have to pay for electricity. In fact, in our country, too many people are paying too little for the electricity they consume. And when they do not pay for the actual cost of the electricity consumption, it is going to lead to theft, it is going to lead to wastage, it is going to lead to inefficiency. So I think this is the fundamental problem in the power sector. All of us need to collectively confront as a nation. And in Odisha's context, I would like to say our ATNC loss is higher than the national average. Whereas the national average is 22%, in Odisha's context, it is 30%. And uh, Odisha government is committed to reform the power sector. As uh, I think Mr. Batra told, we were the pioneers in initiating reforms about two decades ago. But we have now just started the second phase of reforms in the distribution sector. We have four distribution companies. Uh, about four months ago, we, about three months ago, we privatized one discom. Tata Power has taken over that. And now the remaining three discoms, our commission, the Odisha Electricity Regulatory Commission, is actually fast tracking for the privatization of the remaining three, uh, remaining three uh, discoms. And when we talk of uh, environment in power context, we actually all blame coal. I am a mechanical engineer, so I have some kind of attachment to the thermal power plants. But we all blame coal because we think it is the coal-based power plants which is basically polluting the environment. But fortunately, and also technically it is challenging, the share of the coal in generation is coming down. And such acceleration, such transition has been accelerated by the COVID pandemic. In fact, in July 20, thermal power uh, share was about 64%, and in August it is about 61%. While the transition to the renewable energy is inevitable, and nobody can stop this uh, transition, but then every state has unique uh, challenges. We cannot have a nationally determined goal like every state has to have this much of solar, this much of non-solar, and this distinction between solar and non-solar has to go. In fact, the distinction between hydro plant which were commissioned after 2019 and which were commissioned prior to 2019, this kind of distinction also has to go. We have in fact communicated our views to the power ministry uh, in this uh, regard. All states are not equally endowed in terms of renewable energy potential. While Odisha, we have a good potential of hydro, but then building large hydro plants is really challenging. So actually, and in agriculture context, I would like to say, uh, I think PM Kusum gives us a very uh, good opportunity to solarize our agriculture sector. Diesel is a very inefficient use of uh, 
agriculture sector. And free electricity is again a very ba bad disincentive, basically for improving the efficiency in agriculture sector. But as, uh, I, as we discuss about these things, these things are not unique to Odisha. These things actually are uh, national problems. So in fact, Odisha government has now given a suggestion to a parliamentary committee. Uh, the committee which is considering the proposal of having uniform electricity tariff across the country, which we have opposed. But in that context, we have given a proposal to the parliamentary committee that we should have a national level body like the empowered committee of state finance ministers which actually was responsible for introducing taxes and reforms that came because of their efforts and then in fact that the council also uh, basically brought about the gst reform so that is the, that is the predecessor of the uh, gst council so we think i think very deep reforms very wide reforms in the power sector and this cannot be possible unless all states all actors all civil society organizations, international bodies, everybody come together. So we have proposed that we should have a national level body like the empowered committee of state, the energy ministers or power ministers, which could be chaired by the union power minister to drive these reforms across the whole country. So with these few words, I once again, thank you all and wish the deliberations of all success. In the energy department, we can we are looking forward to the outcome of this uh, dialogue and I can assure you all support that will be required to carry out further investigations, further study, further dialogue uh, by IRADE as well as uh, MacArthur Foundation. Thank you all. We see you all a wonderful day. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Dhal. Uh, it's a pleasure to hear from you, uh, the Principal Energy Secretary. Uh, about uh, your uh, views. Uh, of course, uh, you know, I think a lot of uh, policies now are to do with the environment because uh, it's, it's a question of survival that people foresee in the future. So, uh, yes, uh, about uh, the potential which is there in the existing state, it's, it need not be in the existing state. It can be borrowed because eight states mainly have a renewable potential, high renewable potential. Uh, and uh, this power can be bought from from those states. Presently, it's uh, it's uh, the interstate transmission charges are also free. But I just thought I'll put this across. Uh, thank you for your views uh, and being present, of course. Now, uh, Mr. Sethi uh, was to was to get, was to address us next, uh, who is presently Secretary Revenue and Disaster Management. Uh, as well as CMD of Orissa Hydropower Corporation and Green Energy Development Corporation of Orissa, which, which is a very concerned uh, uh, you know, uh, company, uh, the uh, corporations. Uh, unfortunately, we just got a message that someone in his family has uh, been detected with COVID-19 and he has to rush to hospital. So he will not be uh, joining us right now. Uh, we, we hope, of course, hope that everything turns out well for him and his family. Uh, we, he, in fact, he was the person who was principal energy secretary when we first uh, wanted to have this physical uh, sort of stakeholder consultation in um, in Orissa. And uh, he, at that time, the, the minister of power was also supposed to uh, inaugurate. And since this COVID thing came, there was an advisory from the from the Orissa government uh, not to have uh, meetings such as this. And so we cancelled it and we are now having it uh, as a virtual meeting. Uh, but I hope everything turns out well for him and his family. Uh, now we have uh, another uh, eminent uh, person uh, uh, amongst us, uh, Mr. Sri Upendranath Mehra, who is uh, uh, yes, and he's presently chairperson of the Orissa Electricity Regulatory Commission. Uh, as I said, Orissa has been very progressive, uh, has been a very progressive state. Uh, I'll just say a few words about him before I uh, would request him to uh, uh, give his address. Uh, he's an engineering graduate from IIT Kharagpur. Uh, he's uh, He's worked in the industry sector as managing director, ITCO and EPICOL. Uh, ITCO is an infrastructure development corporation. He's also worked as a chief executive of 
Oreda, uh, Orissa Renewable Energy Development Agency, as well as Com Orissa Computer Application Center. Uh, he's played a key role in the Orissa State Management Disaster, State Disaster Management Authority, uh, the first of its kind in the country, especially after the, uh, the super cyclone uh, in 1999. Uh, and he's worked in the Government of India on deputation from uh, in the ministries of Steel, Science and Technology. Uh, and urban development. Uh, he has worked as secretary in, in, in uh, premier departments in, the, in Orissa, such as Home, Finance, Planning, Coordination, General Administration, Forests uh, and Environment, Steel and Mines. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Behra, for uh, uh, joining us and for, for being a part of this uh, inaugural, uh, 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 inaugural session. I, I request you to uh, kindly address us. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Behra, you are muted just now. So I hope you can hear us. No, no you, you have to still unmute yourself. Ha, huh, right. I think that's, no. There is some, no, we, we can't hear you. Uh, Sharmisha, is there some, some way we can hear? Uh. Sir, so, uh, is, is it is it uh, are you having uh, earphones or uh, if you're having earphones, maybe you can remove that and see. Uh, he's using earphones. Right. So, uh, if 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 the if the laptop has got a mic, then you can remove the earphones and see if it works. And maybe take off the connection from the yeah take off the connection from the laptop you know the the audio the sorry the earphone connections oh. uh, this is something which did we test the audio and video of uh, mr Behra earlier no oh, they should be done always in advance uh, anyway is there would you like to speak on the uh, on the mobile and I'll put it on speaker here so that the others can hear uh, and and be in the we, uh, let your video be on but if you can speak on the mobile I'll, I'll put the speaker on from here uh, is, is that all right mr. Barra can you hear me can you hear me uh, are you able to hear me? If, if you can hear me, please nod your head. I, I suggest uh, we can move on to the next person till this is solved by Sharmishta and him. Okay, yeah, Mr. Yeah. yeah, please speak to uh, him separately on the mobile, okay? Yeah, okay, I'll do that. Yeah, uh, then in, in that case, I'll go to the next. Uh, Mr. Behra, I hope you can hear hear me. Uh, I'm not sure if you get it's both ways communication lost both ways or only one way. Uh, well, uh, okay. Sharmishta will manage. Let's move on. I think okay, okay. she will call and manage. Okay. In, in that case, uh, we will uh, go on and to. We need to hurry up a little because we have uh, way past our time. So small we, introduction will be fine. We started late, so it's okay. Yeah. It's all right. And we got some oh, panelists who are not there, so it's. Uh, I, our next. Uh, 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 address we would like from the Principal Secretary, Department of Agriculture, Dr. Subhash Garg, uh, IS, and the senior most uh, uh, IS officer present, uh, I mean, not, not counting, uh, existing in the government. Uh, well, he's uh, presently Principal Secretary, Agriculture and Farmers Empowerment, Orissa. He's, he's also chairman of the state power transmission and grid distribution companies. Uh, over the past 30 years, he has worked in different levels of the government, the district, state, and the central government, as well as in the private sector. He has also worked as advisor with the World Bank, Washington, D.C. He holds a Ph.D. in international economics and development from John, John Hopkins University, U.S. Uh, he has an MBA from IIM Ahmedabad, and he was awarded a, where he was awarded a gold medal. He is B.Tech from uh, IIT, New Delhi. Uh, he is a uh, he was a, a Gurukul uh, 
Chevening uh, Fellow at the London School of Economics and Political Science London. He has published articles and contributed books in different areas, including innovations in administration and corporate governance. Uh, we welcome you, uh, Mr. Garg, and uh, request you to give your address. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Batra. Uh, uh, thanks to Irade, Dr. Jyoti Parekh, Dr. Kirit Parekh and their teams, and to Makata Foundation for inviting me. Um, I see a number of my old friends out here, including uh, Dr. Ajay Shah out here. So good to uh, be among uh, all of you out here. Um, keeping in view uh, the time constraints, I'll be quick because uh, fortunately Mr. Dhal uh, has already spoken and on some of the issues and I'm sure uh, Mr. Behera would uh, address some of the issues from the regulatory side. Uh, just two or three issues which I would like to highlight in the context of Orissa. Uh, partly I'll be primarily speaking from the agriculture side, but I happen to be striding uh, on the transmission and distribution companies uh, for the state also. Uh, number one, I think the issue which had been highlighted earlier also was the issue whether uh, which is more of a policy issue, but we need to look at it in terms of having uh, 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 um, an across the board RP or obligations which are uniform across states. I think we need to uh, look at that uh, different states have different comparative advantages. And uh, while some might have uh, more of solar, some might have more of wind, some might have more of hydro. Uh, and um, States like Orissa also have a lot of uh, the fossil fuels. I'm not getting into that, but I think uh, that's an area that we would perhaps need to relook at the policy issues, uh, whether number one, whether it should be a one size fits all, and whether we need to have subcategorization of, uh, of uh, uh, obligations within solar, within wind, and uh, within hydropower. So, uh, so, so that's one issue which I would like to flag. Of course, uh, Orissa has um, adequate uh, hydro and uh, solar and wind. It's uh, endowed with all of the three possibilities and I'm, I'm sure that we, will, we have been working and we'll continue to work in that. The second uh, issue which I would like to flag is also the fact that uh, uh, now um, um, hydropower, at least mini hydro and uh, micro are part of RE. Um, I'm not too sure whether major projects can be, but in any case, uh, major projects uh, may not really uh, see the light of day in the present circumstances, the kind of issues that there are around it, but I'm just flagging that uh, issue. Um, the other area is given the infirm nature of RE because of uh, variations and uh, the cost of storage of energy coming down significantly. I think, I think that's a very positive uh, uh, going forward. And also the cost of uh, renewable energy has come down from 18 rupees to down to uh, three or even below three now. So, so that's a very, very positive uh, area that uh, which will help to strengthen power supply. And that's, I'm saying it that uh, Orissa Power Transmission Company um, has been ranked as the third best state level uh, public transco by the Inertia 2020 award. So we are, we, are, we are happy on that. And it's a combination of both transmission loss and uh, trans, uh, transmission system availability. On both, uh, on transmission loss, we are within the norms and our system availability is 99.98, uh, which I'm sure we will uh, continue to strive to improve. Uh, one other area which I would want to mention is on the agriculture side. We have this PM Kusum uh, scheme. There have been modifications, uh, obviously, to that. Uh, we had a scheme called the Sora Jalnidhi, which is Sora is solar solar powered uh, uh, pump sets, and especially given uh, a lot of areas are forested and have undulating topography, I think in those kind of uh, topographies and geographies, uh, solar pump sets make a lot of sense both in terms of the investment uh, that would otherwise be required for the uh, transmission or the distribution lines to uh, various areas, as also to the fact that uh, we have adequate uh, sunlight available. So uh, I think that's an area that we will continue to focus on and which will help improve uh, irrigation uh, potential and availability uh, in, in the state. Um, 
uh, I won't like to. Uh, I don't think I'll. i like to add anything further on the, on the on the need and and those kind of issues. I think which all of us out here are fully aware of, and I see that we will be having uh, details uh, discussions on also on the issues right uh, regarding how to, uh, how to inject solar power back into the grid systems, which I think uh, is I think would be a very important. Uh, Possibly, if I can put it, a livelihood addition for small and marginal farmers, that uh, they can generate electricity from their fields, uh, and which can be injected back into the system. It might uh, uh, require some amount of uh, investments on part of the states, but I think uh, we've not yet looked at that as an important uh, livelihood intervention for uh, poor people. Uh, and uh, maybe we need to look at it from that aspect also in terms of injecting it back into the grid system. Uh, with these words, I will end out here and uh, look forward to your report. And uh, uh, I hope to be there for some more time and uh, look to the other panelists and uh, hope that uh, you can, we can have a face-to-face -face meeting, uh, if not in 2020, maybe in 2021. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Garg, uh, for your... Uh... Uh, valuable insights into uh, uh, the priorities in, in Orissa. Uh, there are, of course, I think a lot of this has to do with economics. And fortunately, the economics, or as you said also, of uh, renewable plus storage is actually now almost matching that of uh, coal-based generation. Of course, but the, each state would have to look at it from its own point of view uh, in the sense of a coal-rich uh, state. Uh, you know, how it's going to affect it overall. Uh, but uh, the general trend in the country, in, I mean, around the globe, of course, is environment. Uh, so maybe uh, all those factors can be kept in view. And as you said, uh, the agriculture pumps, that's a very good uh, method because it also not only does it uh, reduce the subsidy, which probably can, the government has to give to, to the farmers, but also uh, the voltage, uh, because it's at the source, the generation is at the source of uh, consumption. The voltage levels, which were very low, abysmally low in in, in uh, earlier in the agriculture side, are now also. Uh, I, I mean, that would be taken care of if you have generation at the source of consumption. Thank you very much. Uh, can we see if Mr.